Hey there, everybody. Welcome into this edition of ESPN FC's Extra Time. Craig Burley, Shaka Hislop along with me. And we have your questions fresh off of Twitter to dive I like right how into. you I like how you just sorted your quiff before you came on earlier. Literally two seconds before you came on, you went, <laughs> oh, that looks better. <laughs> I have the luxury of needing to do that, Craig. There's a lot up on this, a lot of cabbage up here that needs to be rearranged from time to time. That's a problem that not everybody on the show has. I, I understand that, no problem. Well, I have some hair there to, to flick. <laughs> All right. Just don't bother, you know. Not Stuart Robson, you know. No. <laughs> Look at that. Only a matter before we got one of those in there. Okay, uh, where does Callum hudson Adoy fit into Chelsea's long-term plans with the arrivals of Werner and Ziyech and potentially uh, Kai Havertz? It seems like Leroy Sané spilling the beans that Havertz will be heading to Chelsea. What do you think, Craig? Yeah, it's called a squad. And, uh, you know, Man City have been building theirs for quite a while and we'll have to reassemble some parts of it. Uh, Liverpool, uh, their sort of drawback in the last couple of years before winning the title was the bench. And that's something that Jurgen Klopp addressed uh, when United were at their strongest and Arsenal were at the strongest and indeed Chelsea were at the strongest. It was about the squad and about the bench. And so it doesn't make any difference. There's, there's absolutely no difference here. Lampard is looking to address problematic areas and pad up other areas of areas of the team, one of which is the attacking final third. So it's going to be problematic for a lot of these players, but I think he sees it as, I want to keep everybody on the toes. I want to make sure if you're playing like Christian Pulisic is at the moment, you're going to be in the team. Uh, but if you're not playing well, you're going to be out because I've got replacements. Uh, and so I think it's a simple fact of the matter is, if you're in that Chelsea front three, you're going to have to be playing damn well next season to be retaining your plays for the following week. Shaka, next question for you. Reports came out today that Frank Lampard is done with Kepa. If true, who could Chelsea realistically bring in to replace him? Oblak, Onana, or maybe Areola, as he just purchased a new house in London. Shaka, what do you think? Uh, listen, if I was to choose one of the three, it would quite clearly be Oblak. I think without question, one of the best goalkeepers uh, in the world. Areola, um, maybe a, a more realistic option. I, Given the fact that Oblak hasn't left uh, Atletico Madrid uh, to this point, despite how good he's been and how many links there have been over the years, you just wonder if he's ever going to leave. Um, and Onana for me is, is a long-term project. And, and Van der Sar still quite close to Manchester United. You wonder if that's one for them that, that they may be considering, um, despite Henderson's uh, good form of, of, the, of the last 12 months. But I think Chelsea have a, have a bigger issue on their hands with Kepa in how much they, they paid for him and how much they pay him weekly. Uh, I'm not sure that anybody gives you your money back for him or matches that salary, which kind of limits what, what Chelsea can do in, in terms of his replacement. Craig, the Lampard Kepa thing seems almost personal at times. Do you think they should actually get rid of him based on what you've seen from Kepa in goal? Uh, uh, yes, and, and but, but for the reasons that Shaq mentioned, it's going to be difficult. The club are reluctant, clearly, and reticent to take a huge hit on their outlay. Uh, but they might have to, and I think it's come down to sort of a battle of wills with Lampard and the board. But it was at one point, but it may have got to a stage where he says, look, we, we, if we have to take a hit on this guy to move forward, then we have to take a hit. Look, I don't think it's personal. I think Shaq and I have both done a lot of managers that will put up with players they don't like if they're giving you the performance almost every week. Uh, a manager will, if a manager doesn't like you, he doesn't care. If he's getting the performance out of you, you're having a desired effect on him looking better. So this is not personal. I think Lampard uh, has made up his mind that he can't trust him. And look, you mentioned a lot of names there. I mean, the, the best of them is, and, and, and I agree with Shaq, I mean, Jan Oblak is arguably one of the top three goalkeepers in the world. There's no doubt about it and has been for a while. But if these guys are out of reach financially or whatever, I think Lampard could do uh, worse than look closer at home at Nick Pope at Burnley, who uh, uh, there could be a big shout that could be ousting Jordan Pickford for the England number one. So he's been in terrific form. He's had another fantastic season. And I think he is ready. Uh, if, if Sean Dyche and Ian Wan and all the Burnley coaches forgive me, I think he's ready to make that next move. All right, gotta love this next question. What was the biggest upset that the boys were directly involved in while playing for their respective clubs or national teams? Shaka, you first. 
Well, for the national team, be trying to bagel nil, Sweden nil. That probably was as big an upset as, as I've been a part of, um, given what the expectation was going into going into um, going into the 2006 World Cup. On the other side of, of that coin, uh, my first season at West Ham, I think we won our first three games, and I kept three clean sheets in those three games. And then in our fourth game, we played Wimbledon at, at home. We were three 0 up after 30 minutes and somehow managed to lose 4-3. That was an upset 60 minutes in the making that I wish I could put behind me. <laughs> Shaka, since you mentioned the Sweden match, didn't Zlatan write about you in his book? Yes, I did. And I'm sure you'd be happy to know I signed a copy of his book for him. Uh -huh. He's delighted with it. I'm sure it's in the background in his fake <laughs> library and all of his uh, Zoom calls. <laughs> Craig, uh, what's your, yeah, uh, what's your it's, biggest it's upset mantle, that you played a part in? Either way, uh, Well, I, I think my memory's not great, but I think if, if, if memory serves me right, it was the second season at Celtic after we'd won the title and we'd changed management and things weren't going great. And I think we lost in the cup competition to Clyde. Uh, but I'd have to, I'd have to even look back, I can't remember. But one of the ones that didn't, didn't become an upset but the Scotland manager, Craig Brown, at the time, thought it was going to be an upset when, I believe, if memory serves me right, we were drawing with San Marino at half-time. At which point, he was seeing the headlines uh, in, in the national newspapers the next day. And come in at half-time and he says, we, we, we've got to stop this, right? We can't be not beating this lot. He, he, he said, the left-back's a waiter. The, the centre-half's a taxi driver. The goalkeeper's an electrician. The striker's a policeman. He said, we're going to be dragged through the coals. And he, so he was panicking. He was panicking about the headline if we couldn't pull it off. But we did. We did. And we uh, we saved them. Because if you remember right, San Marino scored against England at Wembley in about 20 seconds. One, uh, mm -hmm. one game, Stuart Pearce with a bad back pass. Fortunately, England were, would come back to hammer them. But it, when you play these sides, like San Marino and the Faroe Islands, as we did, and qualifying back in the day. It should be simple, but sometimes when people just get men behind the ball, it, it, it can be awkward. And when you think about losing to these teams, you think about headlines the next day. And that's what the manager was thinking about. So yeah, he rattled through all the jobs. I think he had a list. He actually had a list of the San Marino players and watch each one of them jobs <laughs> that they did just as they came in at half time. Well, you're not very good because you're playing against the uh, midfielder and he's an accountant. <laughs> San Marino and the Faroe Islands. Uh, interesting, Shaka, to hear Craig talk about how difficult those trips can be for the amount that he's talked about CONCACAF, huh? Stop, stop trying to drag me into this, Seb. <laughs> I, I know exactly where you're going. Am I'm I wrong? Am I wrong? I, 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 not they're not next difficult Next question, trips. please. They're not difficult trips. They're just made difficult by 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 us. Mm -hmm. So not difficult. So don't 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 give me conquer calf. I hadn't even heard of conquer calf. I'm, 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 I'm over here. so far from this. Conquer calf. I thought conquer calf was something for filling in the grouting on the kitchen tiles. I mean, I don't. I went, what, what the hell? All right. Before you insult any See, more, I, of our I blame viewers. you for this, Seb. <laughs> yeah, right. I, I blame Conca you for calf. this, Sebby. Yeah, right. hey, we had I'll moved give you past another San one. Marino. Shaq. The Hex. The oh, Hex. We don't have to call that. It's going to be... I could play in the Hex. I could qualify with the Hex now. With both my legs tied together and a blindfold on me. Get out of here. The Hex. Everyone's got a name, isn't it? The Hex. <laughs> oh, where did you get, how did you get to this World Cup final? We qualified out of the Hex. See, Craig, we're going to have you do the voiceover work for the next qualifiers. See if we... Uh... Yeah, I'll do it. I'll go. I'll get you some home truths. <laughs> People don't like home truths. They want panderers. <laughs> all get right. me a, find me a panderer. Oh, there they are. Thousands of them all coming down. What paid? Yeah, Shaka, I blame you. Uh, Shaka, have you ever attempted a? Sport? Don't don't blame me. <laughs> this is on you. Yeah, you brought it up. You can't help yourself. Conquer uh, We got the big Conquer Derby this weekend. Skins. We got uh, Raúl Jiménez, Christian Pulisic. Everybody's talking about. It. Shaka, have you ever attempted a scorpion kick? in a practice or a match? Of course I did. Well, not in a match. <laughs> no, not that silly. Um, but after Higita did it uh, against England at Wembley, of course, that'd become the thing. And everybody was trying it in, in, in practice. 
I think I may have succeeded once, but um, it hurt. Let me just leave it at that. Craig, were there any opposition players you came up against that irritated you personally, like a Neymar-esque ego or just an abrasive personality? Of course, we heard uh, Celtic manager Neil Lennon, who called him Neymar, infuriating, saying he was just trying to wind people up after uh, Celtic and PSG played. The Hex. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to mock me incessantly here on Extra Time and not answer the questions. Great. Just another day at the office. Though. You know, Neil Lennon's not wrong, is he? Let's be honest. He's, he's, not, he's not wrong. I mean, uh, yeah. What wrong. was your other part of it? Uh, did you ever play against somebody that, that uh, yes. was a wind-up merchant, as they like to say? Yes. I won't give them... I won't give them... Uh, I won't give them the um, gravitas of naming them. Oh, that's the whole point. Nobody listens to Extra Time. You can say anything on here, I promise. Can I? <laughs> the heck? Oh, no, no, not that. <laughs> Shaka, you got any wind-up merchants uh, that uh, got under your skin a little bit? No, yeah, nobody bothered me. Nobody skin. bothered with the goalie. Uh, nobody bothered with the goalie. Nobody bothers <laughs> The only people that get under goalie skins are people that chip them in training. Mm. That gets under the goalie skin. Yeah. Yeah, that it does. It does. A lot. Is Mbappe's season going under the radar? I just saw a stat that in 33 games played, he scored 30 times and assisted another 17. What do you think, Craig? Well, it's gone under the radar because the French French decided France decided not to, to, to restart. So you know, sure. and, 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 you know, they're completely dominating the league on again. So I don't, I don't know if it's gone under the radar. Everybody's taking notice of what PSG are doing, but they're come, becoming a little bit bored by it and more interested in, really people have been more interested in how he was going to convert that to the Champions League. Of course, we're going to have the Champions League now on a slightly mm -hmm. different format, but that was kind of where people were looking to see if both Neymar and Mbappe could transfer that sort of league on dominance into the Champions League. Shaka, Harry asks, with the new Premier League season starting on September 12th, does this allow enough time for players to have a pre-season? Uh, yes, it does. Um, because let, let's keep in mind that, but, but for the, the uh, pandemic and, and, and the quarantine, we would have had a, a Euros this, this summer. So players would have gone straight from their domestic seasons, or, or some players would have, would have gone straight from, from their domestic seasons to their national teams, to the Euros, and then would have had two or three weeks off. Now you just have everybody kind of having that, that, same, that same schedule and having to turn around quickly. I, I, I don't see it as, as being an issue. Not in, not in today's football where the sports science has, has evolved to, to the point that it is today. Listen, Sebi, we, we should sort of get away from worrying about professional football players and pre-season. The one thing that's constantly been brought up by managers in particular, but certain players, is rest. Now, the players have had an unwanted and unexpected, what was it, I, I'm off the top of my head, it was a couple of months we had the, the mm -hmm. shutdown for or there or thereabouts. I don't have the exact amount of time, but it was at least a couple of months. So they got an unexpected couple of months rest. Then they've had a, 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 a sort of concertina uh, program that they've had to play in, but they've had extra subs so and they've been rotated. For those in the Champions League, it's going to be slightly more difficult. For those not in those competitions, they're going to probably get a rest now with a, a shortened pre-season, with a training programme, and then they're off and running again. So, as Shaq said, I, I don't, if people are going to make it an issue, I think they're making it an issue just for the sake of it. Because the guys have had a great rest, short burst in, in games, another rest, little bit of training, off and running again. I think in the circumstances of what everybody's had to deal with, it's probably going to work out not too bad in the football parlance. Craig, coming back to you for the next question. Which manager, if any, is under the most pressure this weekend? Plenty to choose from. Lampard, Solskjaer, Brendan Rodgers. Uh, anybody else on that list? And who's at the top of it? 
I would say Solskjaer, uh, because Brendan Rodgers, if he gets them in the, if, if they don't get in the top four, it'll be a huge disappointment from where they were. But before the season started, you know, top six for them would have been a pretty good result. Bear in the mind, uh, they lost Harry Maguire to United for a record fee, and they, they didn't, they've not got the biggest squad, and now they've lost, you know, an unbelievable amount of players, particularly in defensive areas. From Lampard's perspective, there is a pressure because of the, the ownership and the players that have been signed. There's no doubt about that. Uh, but his excuse will be, you know, squad size, transfer ban, first year in the job. And whilst I'm not saying th those are all excuses, there's something that they could use. Solskjaer's different. He's been in the job, what, 18 months or so. They've spent money. He's, he knows more about his players. Uh, he's brought some big names in. And they've never been in the top... Well, they might have been at the start of the season, but they've been out of the top four most of the season. And if they don't make it as Manchester United with the expectations that that club have, I think that puts him under the most pressure, uh, bearing in mind what they've spent and the squad that they have. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.